Peter and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And the third one from Corinthians 8, 16 to 19. Thanks be to God who placed in the heart of Titus the same dedication to you that I have. He welcomed my request and eagerly went to visit you by his own free will. With him we have sent the brother who is praised in all the churches for spreading the gospel. More than that, he has also been selected by the churches to travel with us while we are administering this work of kindness for the glory of the Lord and as evidence of our eagerness to help. This is the, um, the minister's wife um, of the church that, I can't remember which church it was. Do you guys remember? There were so many, really. I honestly can't remember. Anyway, she was absolutely delightful. And she's wearing one of our prayer shawls. We had just presented a prayer shawl to her. And uh, there was obvious delight in that. And um, she, was, uh, she was just a queen bee kind of, Oh, it was an amazing woman, and I just love her. Um, I found out afterwards, I didn't realize that she was one of the, the delegation that had come here in 2013, so um, it was really great to connect with her. Um, I also don't normally comment on the, the anthems that the Contemporary Choir sings, but I do need to talk about the Potter's Hand. First of all, I need to thank uh, Betty Lou, Aaron, and the choir for their musical leadership this morning. The Potter's Hand, I, I, I love that imagery of the potter's hand, and uh, um, I thought about that a lot at, while I was away in Korea. And this particular piece that we had planned that I actually had chosen during the summer of last year um, with kind of the Korean experience in mind, um, they ended up singing while I was gone. <laughs> so I wanted to do it again. So we, d we did it this morning. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O God, this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Michael Blair, who is a part of the General Council staff for Mission and Justice, was recently quoted in the United Church's Gathering magazine with the following. Interculturalism is the engagement of difference. It's not just about skin color, or race, or ethnicity, or language, or culture. Rather, interculturalism is the recognition of and willingness to work with all the differences encountered, seeing the differences as part of a rich fabric of any community. Beautiful image. This exchange was an amazing opportunity to build on the United Church's commitment to interculturalism and ecumenism. Our itinerary was full. For the moment we got there, I got off the plane, went right to dinner with a whole bunch of folks visiting many of the churches in the PROK, but also other denominations, meeting church members and clergy, visiting historic sites, educational institutions, missions projects. We stayed in folks' homes, mostly members of churches, and experienced the culture firsthand and engaged those differences, as Mary and Sarah have already alluded to. We had the opportunity to build relationship with global partners, who are now friends, so that we might learn together what it's like to be church together. It was a transformational experience for us, and uh, Sarah has put together a video uh, of our trip which gives you a very small taste of our experience. The music is the main melody of the unification song, a piece of music that is sung often and revered in the Korean experience. Have a look. Thank you. 
Bob Anderson. I was one of the uh, lucky people that was uh, able to go to Korea. One of my highlights, uh, one of the things that impacted me the most was the uh, DMZ. The DMZ stands for the Demilitarized Zone, which is four kilometers wide, area separating North and South Korea. It runs the length of the Han River, which is uh, 240 kilometers long. Both sides of the have electric fences, landmines, la tanks, uh, and full, body, full battle readiness. About 200 people live, on the modern, live in modern homes in the DMZ on the south side of the Han River, working their seven hectare rice farms. Soldiers guard, stand on guard while villagers work the fields of rice and ginseng. <clears throat> One of the more 
moving things in the area was to see the thousands of peace ribbons tied to the chain link fences. Both Each ribbon contains wishes and prayers for the loved ones from both sides <clears throat> and hopes of re reunification for the country who is so divided with a dark cloud of, and political tensions to see such expression of hope uh, was overwhelming. We also had an opportunity to see one of the tunnels <clears throat> under the DMZ. Since 1974, four tunnels have been found, dug by North Korea. They <clears throat> Uh, so they could launch surprise attacks against the South Koreans. These tunnels are 265 meters long and are 73 meters underground. They serve as a reminder how close war can be. South Korea suspects that there are more tunnels which yet have not been located. One of my challenges, the food. Since <laughs> Sam's not a seafood person. I had very difficulty adjusting to the Korean diet as well as the chopsticks. <laughs> I think the picture tells it all. <laughs> so the highlight for me was probably the scenery. And this picture is a picture I took in the Walmido Park. And so it was just really neat going there because the scenery is just really different. Like all the buildings are super tall and condensed and then the traffic is actually really crazy. So like there's narrow streets and there's like cars everywhere and it's actually kind of crazy and I didn't think I was gonna make it sometimes, but I'm here, so that's a plus. And the, it was just really cool to see all the trees they had and just everything was just amazing. And then one of my lowlights was probably the language barrier. We all tried really hard to communicate, and most of the time we got through, but sometimes it was just kind of confusing going places and not being able to read the signs and stuff. One of the times um, at my homestay, I had a guy that was able to speak English, but sometimes he would leave and go to school and hang out with his friends, so then I'd be with his parents, and his parents didn't really understand English that well, but we tried really hard. And the funny thing was, I would always say his son's name wrong. So I'd be like, oh yeah, where's Kim? And they're like, who's that? I'm like, um, Kumin. And they're like, who are you talking about? I'm like, your son. And they're like, oh, Kumin. I'm like, I said that, but OK. <laughs> so that was a good experience. Hello. Um, I'm Sarah. Uh, one of the lowlights of this trip, I mean, it wasn't horrible, but um, the traffic. Like Mary said, it was pretty crazy. Lots of times it would look as though it were a one-way street, so it's one lane, but cars would be coming from both sides. And it was sometimes it was a game of chicken. <laughs> Who's going to back down first? But. Um, <laughs> Um, the travel time was actually quite long. Uh, the plane ride was about 10 hours from Vancouver to Incheon. Um, one night when we were traveling from Gimpo City back to Incheon to our homestays, uh, it was a two hour car ride because we were just crawling through traffic and we were going to meet up with our homestays to go and hang out. And so we were saying things like, oh yes, yes, we'll be there in uh, about an hour and then two hours later. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, uh, one of the highlights of the uh, trip was definitely the people. Um, we got to meet a lot of youth, and they were all amazing. Most of them spoke English really well. And <clears throat> the guy in the middle in the blue coat, he was our guide for the Youth Day to Seoul and he coordinated it all and he was amazing. Um, uh, I think that one of the best parts of the trip was making the connections with the people from the PROK Presbytery because even though their denomination is mostly Presbyterian, they share many of our values and definitely demonstrated that 
through their hosting of us. They were all very kind and very patient with us, even though we couldn't speak Korean. Um, I especially had fun with my homestay mom, who at night I would watch Korean dramas with her. <laughs> um, and uh, in the morning, uh, my homestay dad would explain to me in somewhat broken English what we were doing that day, just to give me a little bit of security while we were there. And they, once they found out that I had an interest in lear learning Korean, um, they would point to something and tell me what it was, and I'd be like, oh yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with all of the people there. Thanks. My name is Kathy, and I know that I was supposed to talk about one highlight and one challenge, but I never do what I'm told. There were so many highlights that I couldn't just choose one, so I'm going to talk about two highlights and not talk about challenges. Um, one thing I learned, and if we can have the next slide, I learned that young people are the same worldwide. The first day of our visit, we spent with our host family. We attended church with them. And then the youth of the congregation took us under their wings and spent the day showing us their community. Um, we might not have been able to speak the same language, but the laughter and the fun crossed all barriers. One of our stops was to an old Confucian school where Bob was duly punished for some misdeed or other. I don't know for sure who was having the most fun, the kids or Bob. <laughs> Later, we visited an open market where we had the opportunity to experience local street food. And if I can see the next slide, the public health in me just cringed as I was presented with a compressed fish on a stick that all of the youth were so excited about sharing with us because it was such a special treat to be able to have that. Uh, there was no way we could say no. Um, their enthusiasm was just so infectious. The day was rounded out by a visit to a professional baseball stadium where we tried to break through a, a locked gate to get on the, gate, uh, on the field. And later we had ice cream in the, sta in the stadium station confectionery um, and then took a trip to a rock climbing park. And I have to say, we just laughed our, our whole way through the day. Throughout the week, and we can go on to the next slide here, we visited many churches in Incheon Presbytery, and I was taken by the extent and commitment of the people to their social ministry and outreach, from forming their own credit union, developing grocery stores, providing a community lunch every Sunday, not just for the congregation, but the whole community. Congregations were involved in their own community. One church, one church in particular, Han Church, was formed out of the recognition of a need for outreach not provided by the government. Their focus is on elderly women living alone and the unemployed. Each day they provide a new meal, and we were privileged to be able to participate in serving that meal. Hain Church also offers employment through envelope, stu envelope stuffing business, a coffee shop, and a restaurant, all run by the elderly and the underemployed. And I think if you looked, as you looked at the video, there were a few images that showed those particular areas um, that was very, very moving. They also run a second-hand store for anything that you might want. What impressed me the most was that each of these congregations identified and saw their community and their own needs and were able to meet the specific needs of their own community. As you can see from this brief glimpse um, and the comments of my fellow travelers, intercultural connection uh, <clears throat> excuse me, informs one's spirit in a really dramatic way. While in Korea, I was really struck by the strength of the personal faith exhibited by our hosts. The regularity of worship, the priority given to relationship building and community, the mission work, the ecumenical work, the prayer and hope and effort pledged to reunification efforts, 
the excitement about the potential for future exchanges, and the commitment particularly to youth to explore and connect across continents, the dedication to daily prayer. All of those moved me to tears on, on several occasions, and it wasn't until um, after our visit to the demilitarized zone, and in the process of that, we participated in a mass singing of the unification song um, with our hosts. I fully came to understand why I was so moved. The fragility of the peace that exists between the two Koreas and the threat that our new friends have lived with every day for some of their entire lives, um, and which once again has bubbled over um, in the last two weeks, we've heard it in the news, that, that threat, that shadow is ever present. And yet there exists abundant love, abundant hope, abundant joy, abundant music, ab abundant peacemaking. The intentionality and passionate living out of the teachings of Jesus every day is an inspiration to me and something that I will continue to seek to emulate in my ministry. The Korean people are incredibly resistant and incredibly faith-filled. Thank you for your support and your prayers while we made this trip. Please keep North and South Korea in your prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us bless each other as we go from this place today. Let us go out into the world remembering. Remembering who we are. Remembering whose we are. Let us go out into the world to love, cherish, and nurture all of whom we meet, all of God's creation. Let us go with God's blessings. May grace, mercy, and peace be with us all, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.